Hey guys, it's Nikki. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. In today's video, as you can tell by the title, we are going to be getting into the nitty gritty of things. We're going to be getting into detail about, we're going to be getting into detail about how much do ultrasound techs really make? How much can you make as an ultrasound tech? We're going to get into that. Sorry for it being a little bit dark and you're probably hearing thunder outside. It's storming, but we're still going to make a video. So, Let's, everybody asks me, how much do you make? How much does an ultrasound tech make? How much can I make? And the truthful answer is, it depends. Now, what I mean by that, it just depends. It depends on the level of experience. If you're a new grad, if you want benefits, if you're going to travel, you're going to be per diem, you're going to be part-time, you're going to be full-time, where you live, Okay. There's a bunch of different factors that kind of go into it. So I want to get into majority of them. It's not all of them. So as a new grad ultrasound tech, so typically you're going to come out of school with like one registry. Maybe you can come out with all three. It just depends on how you're feeling with your registries. And that's OK. OK, I came out of school with my abdomen and then I waited like six months and I took my RVT. So now I'm RDMS abdomen and I'm RVT, registered vascular technologist, okay? Take your time, you know, there is no rush. Um, I also got questions about, you know, did you get hired at clinical sites and did you find it hard to find jobs? So I guess I'll start there. So yes, I did get hired at my clinical site. I was very lucky to rotate at sites where when I was doing research when I was a student, it seemed like their pay was well and, you know, it, it would have been worth my time. Um, depending on like the company that you work for in a hospital is going to be depending upon like how much they'll pay you as well. Did I find it hard to find a job outside of school? Yes. And I'll tell you why. So I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket just because god forbid things didn't work out with my clinical site i was like all right you know i started applying to places before i graduated and before i even was rdms or ardms and some facilities will allow you to work without having your um ARDMS certification, they'll give you a year to obtain it, just the ARDMS portion or they can do the ARDMS and RBT. Um i just wanted to kind of get my name out there so i created like a resume my last semester we all did and we submitted it and then like our professors gave us feedback and i would apply um i just really wanted to see what recruiters and supervisors were really looking for and how much they were willing to pay a new grad and a lot of that information i found straight on indeed um, typically they'll give you a range, let's say the range for that job. I'm not saying that this is the range that like I saw, but like 20 to $30, you know, they'll give you a range. Um, oh my gosh, that thunder is crazy. <laughs> they'll give you a range of what they might be, um, willing to pay. And typically, 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 um, new grad ultrasound tech is going to be on like that lower end. Um, but I submitted applications. I mean, I put on there that I was still in school. Um, but ultimately, I ended up at my last clinical site, which is always a great thing to do. So these clinical sites, these rotations are like job interviews, right? You're going there, you're learning, but you also want to be a good tech, a great worker, a great student. You want to seem interested. You know, you want them to want you back. You want them to be interested in you because at the end of the day, it's tough out here to get a job as a new grad sonographer. And I really thought that because I was always told, oh my God, there's a shortage of ultrasound techs. It's gonna be so easy to get a job. There's money to find, which there is, which we'll talk about. But as a new grad tech, it is hard. A lot of the times these positions, they'll say at least one year of experience, which I mean, technically we do have clinical experience as new grads, but a lot of the times they'll want you to have experience in certain things. They'll say three to five years, like, you know, so I was very happy that I got to work at my clinical site because I was already 
I was already familiar with the protocols and the machine that they had. It was just a matter of me doing things like completely on my own, like nobody checking my work. And even at first they still did that, which was great, which I loved because you get feedback which we need. We are new grads. We're not going to be perfect at everything. And that's the beauty of this field. There's always room for improvement, but it was tough. And I know that it was tough even for other people who graduated and didn't end up working at like for clinical sites. And it's just tough to find a job sometimes, especially as a new grad, you know? Um, it is scary to go on like your first interviews. You're like, oh my God, what are they gonna ask me? What are they gonna want me to scan? Um, and it can be tough, but I really think that, especially these clinical sites that we're going to, like they're gonna want per DM techs, you know, especially per DM techs. They're gonna maybe want a full-time tech, but they're gonna really want like those per DMs, those new grads. They're gonna wanna teach them everything that they know so that that tech is, really almost like perfect for that facility you know what i mean like they know the patients over there they know the machine they know everything like they're really going to teach you from the ground up so it's really cool i think to work at your clinical sites but you don't have to there's jobs but you have to be mindful that a lot of them for some reason um a lot of people don't want a new grad or i notice as well that they want you to have your RVT, which is fine. A lot of people take their RVT right after they get out of school. Like I said, it took me six months. Um, and it just depends on your timeline. Now, in regards to pay, <laughs> we're gonna get real on this channel, okay? Ultrasound tech pay, you can make bank as an ultrasound tech, okay? You can make really great money. Um, in the medical field, there's money to be made. You have to know how to negotiate, okay? negotiate what they're offering you, you know, oh, come back with a counter offer and see what they'll do. And also, do you want to be per diem? Do you want to be full time? Do you want to travel? And those are the three that I really want to talk about today because it's kind of what I'm most familiar with, with the text that I surround myself with. Okay. So I'm going to give you details, not only from personal experience, but texts that I surround myself with and research that I've done. So we'll talk about per diem tax, full time tax and travel tax. So let's start off with per diem. A lot of times um, when you're a new grad tech, you're going to get offered a per diem position, which is great. So per diems typically are going to make more hourly because per diem is as needed. You're not full time. You don't get benefits with per diem or PRN positions, okay? So if you're someone who is looking for benefits, that's something to think about. Now, but back to per diem. So when I first got hired, I was per diem um, as I was training and then I just got switched over to full time. And there is going to be a pay difference. Now, per diem techs, depending on where you live, that's the key, depending on where you live, um, they can make bank. Like I, my range, let's say that I've seen, I live in Florida, um, the range that I've seen would be anywhere from like $32 to maybe $40, $42, okay? It depends. Um, typically, what I've noticed, at least with the company that I work for, that per diem rate is pretty steady. Um, I do believe that you still get, let's say like shift differentials. I'm going to get into more of like the shift diffs though in the full-time position. Um, but I think you still get like shift differentials. Um, like if you work second shift, third shift, overnight, etc. Um, you don't get benefits, you don't get PTO, but you get to create your own schedule. So let's say you start off at a facility and you're like, hey, you know, I really see a lot of like abdomen, general and vascular, but I really wanna do OBGYN. Let me find an OBGYN clinic who's hiring a per diem. You pick up some shifts there. You can say, hey, you know, so-and-so at my, my hospital, I can only work these set days or I can only work X amount a week. And then you can go to your other supervisor. Hey, I can only work X amount a week. And you create your own schedule, which I think is really, really cool and really dope. You can 
take off. You can say, hey, I'm not available for like these three weeks and you're not available. So a lot of the times with per DM and PRM positions, you're filling in um, when full-time techs need PTO, need days off, or when, you know, maybe it's in season, they're really busy, they need to pepper in some people. So they'll use per DM techs to kind of help out, you know? And I think it's a great experience as a new grad tech to experience that just because you learn how to work with others, of course, and you're also able to create your own schedule and you can work at multiple places. So you'll have the ability to put, hey, I worked at place one and place two for this amount of time, or I still work there, I still pick up shifts there. That's one option, okay? So per DM, PRN, great. You're gonna get paid bank. You don't get benefits, but that's okay. If you don't need them, um, you create your own schedule. And you don't get PTO, but pros and cons. There's pros and cons to everything, right? So now, we're gonna go from per DM and let's say now we go full time, right? And that's what happened to me. So I was per DM at first, I got trained like full time hours, per DM pay, and then they were like, hey, we need a full time tech, are you interested? I was like, sure. Now, one thing that sucked was the pay difference, okay? I was like, ugh, <laughs> because per DM pay is good money. Like, that's good money, but I, wanted the benefits and I also wanted I wanted stability um although I was stable in my per diem position just because I hadn't technically worked per diem hours yet because I was getting trained because that's just how my facility did it they like to train full time especially for new grad techs um I just wanted stability in my schedule and I felt like I needed that so I decided to take it I decided to take um weekend shifts at the time so yeah when they came at me with that first offer I was like wait a second I was like I made this much as per diem and now I'm gonna make this much and I was already registered by this point I wasn't RBT but I was registered RDMS um but so what I did was you know my supervisor is great she basically was like listen i know they're gonna lowball you you don't have experience you are a new grad tech but we're gonna push back okay so she was like let's say they're gonna say this number we're gonna say this they're gonna have to think about it i guess like the board has to review it go over it they're gonna come back with an offer and then we're gonna say okay do we like this do we not right so in my position they kind of came and said listen you know you're getting this amount it hourly but you're getting because of the shifts that I worked this thunder is crazy because of the shifts that I worked they said you're gonna get this amount for let's say shift whatever differential so either like shift two shift three or overnight and then also this amount because you're doing weekends so really it's okay to push back and say, hey, I want a little bit more because then they're probably gonna come back and give you a little bit more of a detailed reason or version as to why, you know, they're not, let's say, gonna budge with the hourly rate. Now, for example, I knew that there was gonna be some type of like differential, but I just didn't know like how much it was. So when they came back and they explained it and then some places, I don't know if it's every place though, like please, I'm not an expert of every place, but they're staff. Basically, I ended up getting these around the same amount that I was getting paid per DM because of the shift that I accepted plus benefits and everything. So it made sense to me. Now I know, like it definitely hurt a little bit at first i was like oh my god i'm making like this much less but it's different so you have benefits so you get all that you sign up for your benefits you get pto um, you know you have a set schedule so if you're someone who you're like yeah you know i feel like i just want to work like these days a week or i want to work a set day so that i know like what I can do outside of work on certain set days, then full-time or part-time is gonna be for you. Part-time is very similar, but I think it's just gonna be a little bit less than 40 hours a week or 37 to 40 hours a week. And then um, one less day, depending on like what kind of shifts you do, because the full-time shifts can be broken up into eight hours, 10 hours, and then like 12 and a half hour shifts. Um, also, if you're going to be working overnight, there is going to be an overnight uh, 
shift diff typically. So that's something to look into too. There's money to be made as a full-time tech. You have to negotiate and you have to fight for yourself, especially if you're gonna be working those overnights, like you gotta fight for yourself. Like, yes, the hourly rate may be less for the full-time or part-time tech, maybe less than a per diem tech, but always ask for like that detailed description of like what you'll be making and the shift differentials because I, if I'm not mistaken every hospital has it and you know it will add up eventually and you'll see based upon that too do I really want to take this is it really worth me getting paid less than what I did per DM versus now but similar amount is it worth it you know you got to figure out what's worth it for you and then there's going to be the travel positions where they sound like great all right, you can be making two thousand, three thousand dollars a week traveling, but they typically want somebody who at least had one year of experience as an ultrasound tech. So I don't know how it works for new grads, to be honest with you, with traveling, because I didn't go into traveling. But a lot of the travel techs that I have met over this time period have worked staff jobs for years and years and years and had years of experience and then decided to travel. But there is bank in tra literally travel and get paid to travel. Like if you ever wanted to go somewhere and you find a contract, you're like, all right, I'm gonna take that. A lot of the times they'll give you like stipends or whatever for your hotel or like gas and stuff, like depending. Um, but there's money to be made in travel sonography. That is all I know. And I always like to look on Indeed um, and look at things that are local to me just because I wanna know like, how much you know other places offer you see like travel positions open with different travel companies around here i'm like three thousand two hundred dollars a week like sign me up but i know for me that's just not the best option because you know i like to be close to home and i don't need to all right but there's money to be made in ultrasound guys okay that's what i'm trying to say there's money to be made negotiate know how to talk know how to have a conversation it is a little bit awkward when you're like, listen, I feel like they're lowballing me. You know, I feel like they're not offering me a lot. It is a little bit awkward, but at the end of the day, you have to fight for yourself. You don't need to be aggressive about it, but say, hey, I want to push back on this offer. We'll see what they give. You can even offer a little bit more than what you really want to see if maybe they fall back in the middle and be like, all right, we'll give you that, even though that's what you really wanted in your head, you know? Gotta be a little smart about it. Get together with your supervisors or, you know, your higher ups, or if you're looking into ultrasound, yes, there's money to be made. There's different ways to make money. I also know some techs too who, I think this is more of like an older way of doing things where I don't think it's so common right now, but I've heard about it. You get paid per patient. And I was like, what do you mean you get paid per patient? And some, in their experience, outpatient facilities, they would literally pay per patient, like per scan. So if you did 10 scans a day, however much they were giving you, they're going to pay you for 10 scans that day. Now, that can be good and bad. What if you only had three scheduled for that day? You know, but I mean, that's cool too. There's a lot of different ways to kind of play around with, you know, it just all depends. It really depends on where you live and how the cost of living is and all of that. So I know this video was a really big, like it depends, but I really wanted to give you guys like a range. Like I said, for like per DMs, it can range from like 30 to $40 an hour, depending on where you live, okay? Full-time techs, I've seen companies offer up to like $45, but depending on where you live and the level of experience you have, because as you continue to grow in the ultrasound field, you will become ultrasound tech one, tech two, tech three. And then you'll hold that like tech three year. I don't know if they go to tech four and tech five. And what comes with those titles are bits of increases. So it really depends where you live, your years of experience. I do not think as a new grad tech, you don't have to accept every offer that anyone gives you. Now, I know sometimes, you know, they're like, listen, just take the first job, you know, because, you know, the experience. And yes, that is true, but also know your worth and know that you're worth more, especially if you're coming out of school with your registries done. You know, if you require me to have my RVT after a certain amount of time and I have that I think that 
we as tech should be compensated for that because you want us to learn this skill you want us to take it it's a requirement to work at your facility if i don't have it by this time i will be let go we should be getting paid for that and i know not every place does it but fight for yourself it doesn't hurt to ask hey you know, I've been working here for a while. I could just get my RVT. Do you mind reaching out and seeing if I'm eligible for some type of raise or increase because I got my RVT? Simple conversations, um, and they're good to have because your supervisor will know kind of where you stand with certain things and not in a bad way, but I know that my supervisor, like, she always fought for me, and I really appreciate that because I know not everybody's like that and not everybody will take like the initiative to do that. Um, but my supervisor always fought for me like, listen, they're going to lowball you for the full time position, but we're going to push back. And or, you know, hey, I know you got your RVT. We're going to push for more. We're going to see, you know what I mean? Because now you're dual registered. You're not just uh, you don't just have one registry. Now you have two. So we're going to push for that. And every time I came to her with something like she always like wanted to push me in the direction of hey we're gonna communicate we're gonna see how much we can get an increase and I really appreciate that because it taught me a lot about you know what I deserve as a tech so far especially like being a new grad like I honestly didn't expect to get paid in all my like crazy amount but my supervisor really helped me and helped me realize like hey you you deserve you took your test like you deserve especially if it's required by them it doesn't hurt to ask shoot them an email hey am i eligible for this or ask your supervisor can you email them and say ask if i'm eligible for any type of increase it's okay i think it's great to have those conversations so that was my little sum up of what ultrasound techs make it all depends um I'm going to go over quickly just Florida, just because that is where I um, work. There are websites that you can go on and they'll show you the different percentiles and what the range is for like the full, for the pay of an ultrasound tech. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. We'll read some stats together and I'll leave the link down below so you can just plug in wherever you live, whatever state, and you can kind of see what varies around you. The website that I'm currently on is ultrasoundschoolsguide.com and it's going to give you a um, dollarly amount and then a annual income based on your state. So for example, Florida, the medium median hourly wage is $28.98 and then the median annual salary is $60,300. Okay, so it really all depends. You can make great money starting off um, out of school, but I've seen higher numbers than that. So let's uh, look at other places. Cause BLS.gov, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Um, the median hourly wage for diagnostic medical sonographers is $40.58. The median, median annual rate wage is $84,410. And it's also going to depend on what you're like focused on. Like, um, you know, there's so many different subdivisions of ultrasound, pediatrics, abdomen, vascular, OBGYN, echo, pediatric echo, must going to depend on that as well. Forgot. So the 10th percentile in Florida, 29.54, making about 61 thousand four hundred and thirty dollars the median is about 50 percent so 39 11 and then 81 thousand and three hundred and fifty dollars okay so it really is going to depend um let's see let me look up like another random state depends on your cost of living where you live like you guys know there's so many factors like i said in this video that's why like <clears throat> when people ask me i can't give you like a straight answer there's gonna be a range you know that i can kind of give but um i can say probably gonna be making more than 50k a year which is crazy especially if you're a younger ultrasound tech or maybe you've never had another job before that's a crazy starter um salary i mean i know the cost of everything is increasing now but that's great like you guys should all be proud of yourselves you guys are looking into this career you are getting into this career like 
be proud of yourselves um but know that there's money to be made and you can fight for yourself in a nice way and you can get more money if you simply just ask for it you know you take your registries you do what you need to do depending on the shifts you work and everything like you can make more money but you got to advocate for yourself because not everybody's going to do that for you or with you i know that i was very lucky with my supervisor but i know that every it should be everybody is like that, every supervisor, but I know that it's not always like that. Oh, they really go into like the different like counties and everything. So I'll link this down below because you can really make, it'll really give you like a detail. Um, ultrasound in Georgia around 56,000 per year. So it's very similar, just depends. A lot of different variables, but that is what i have for you guys today i hope this video was helpful again remember i am a new grad tech i really only have experience with the one place that i've been at and um you know from learning from other sonographers as well so i came on here to share that information with you guys i do hope that it was helpful i really really do because i know we're all out here like we're all wondering. We're all wondering. I was wondering. So we're all wondering. And I, I really hope that this helped you guys. If you guys have any more questions, let me know down below. I'm going to link um, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics down below because I think that's going to just be the most accurate representation of like what we can make as techs, um, especially depending on where we live. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you guys the best of luck on your journeys, especially, you know, new grads, whether you're a seasoned tech or when you're in, whether you're in school, like I wish you guys the best of luck. And, you know, thank you guys so much for watching me. I really appreciate it. Um, I know I don't get to make videos as often anymore, but I gotta recuperate after my shifts because I've it's busy and I get tired and it's a lot and I'll make a vlog one of these days of me going to work and showing you guys like my workload and how many I do and how I prep myself for the day and how I stay positive throughout the day and everything um but that is soon to come okay so thank you guys so much for watching i hope this was helpful i wish you guys all the best of luck don't forget to like this video comment down below subscribe to my channel for more and i will see you guys in the next one very very soon